just want to say happy Sabbath to all those who are online, who have called in. Just want to praise God. God is awesome and powerful. Just want to welcome mm-hmm. all those who are calling from our home base church, Ajax, and also to remind you that we have been praying and fasting tomorrow. So if you're in the neighborhood, you could just come out and support as we have a powerful fellowship with the Lord. Praise God. Um, so I am so happy just listening to all the testimonies and how good God is and his graciousness and his power. And we just want to welcome all those who are calling in for the first time. We have people calling in from all over the globe, from different countries, and we are going to be making some connection tonight. I will be speaking briefly with um, our dear brother, Royce, and I'm just telling you to fasten your seatbelts. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to present a short word, and God is with us, and I'm going to open with a prayer, and then I'm going to invite Brother Royce to unmute his phone. And I know we are trying to keep everything very quiet so everyone can hear. That's the key behind this, that we everything is clear. Let us pray. Father in heaven, great God, we just want to thank you and praise you and exalt you for everything that you have been doing and what you're about to do tonight for your people. Lord, we just pray that you will cover us I pray, O God, that you will cover every home. You will prevent every attack, every discouragement, every every attack by the enemy. I pray that you will just cancel them with the blood, that they will have no power, no authority over your people, so that as we fellowship, love will come down, joy and power, and we will speak the word because the power is in our tongue. So as we speak... We will experience the power of God tonight in a mighty way. So I pray for every homes, everyone calling from Jamaica, from um, UK, from Dubai, from every country around the world. As we fellowship together, I pray that you will cover us under your blood, under your wings. In Jesus' name, we just want to praise you, exalt you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, Brother Rice, could you unmute your phone? Brother Rice calling from Australia. Hello, all. Happy Sabbath. And, um, praise, praise the, the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hello, Brother Amen. Patrick and family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Brother Rice. I know you're always giving the glory to Jesus. And we're going to go really slow. I want everybody to get this. This is very powerful. We know we're going to bring you over here, hopefully for December 31st, so you can really share where the Lord has taken you. So, where in Australia are you, my brother? I actually live on the western side, so western Australia, um, in a city called Perth. And... um, I'm currently in the middle of the desert in Western Australia at a mine site called uh, Murramurran. It's a native um, Aboriginal name. And um, okay. we're mining nickel out here. So that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Okay. So you are in the middle of nowhere in a mine field. You are mining nickel. So you are with a big company in the middle of nowhere in Australia. That's correct. It's a uh, good hour and a half flight. You- yeah. And you're praising God anyway. So there's a scripture that says, anywhere we go, the Lord dwelleth there. And even in the midst, so you flew in from Perth. You flew in from where you live. That's correct. It's um, too far to drive, uh, uh, Brother Patrick. It takes a whole day to drive by vehicle. Yep. Okay. So we fly here. Okay, praise the Lord. I want you to share a little bit of, of your life and you were in the occult could you just share because people don't understand like for example the the new age movement movement they don't understand about the occult and what is going on that this is real could you share 
a little bit when you were on the other side, when you did not know Jesus? How did you get involved? Oh, definitely. And the first thing I'll um, I'll start off with this to say is this new age business is very dangerous. Praise the glory to Jesus. But where I where I started with that, um, I end up going for a, a marriage divorce, and um, that, as we know, it's almost like a living funeral. And um, I was looking, I was looking for Jesus then. I was looking for God, but in all the wrong places. And then I got involved in a, a business deal, a real estate deal that um, set me belly up even worse. And um, and um, and with the partnership I was in, that was a nasty place. And I was actually suicidal at that time. It, it's something about when a man loses everything he's got, his family, his finances. I was under attack then. I was literally under attack then. I just didn't realize that how many doors I'd opened. But as I was looking for help, at this particular time, um, on my search to find Jesus, um, I was under resistance. I couldn't say Jesus' name, and I couldn't go to a church. Uh, like if I went to a church at this time, there was just sheer hatred in me. I just I didn't hate the people, but I just couldn't go through the doors. So then I went the other way. I started going into meditation, um, yoga, Middle East. Okay, practice. okay, all right. I'm going to slow you down a little bit to explain so the listeners can hear. So you are going through a brokenness in your home. Your family was gone. Your finances were completely devastation was gone. And at that time, and I yep. want people who are listening to learn that some of us are going through some trials because God ordained it. Sometimes it's a test. So you are going through this. And in that time, you decided you want to seek for Jesus, the Lord. But when you tried to go into the church, there was a blockage. And when you just couldn't yes. get to church. So in other words, now you turn to the other side and you started to, to visit the yoga. Could you tell us a little bit about visiting the yoga and the New Age? Go ahead. Well, I've come to, to know what started it um because my heritage is um gypsy from um germany so through my mother um tarot card readings and and self pride about this heritage and the, obviously the occults which come through that bloodline um i grew up with this so to me to go look for um spirituality into the occults was very easily so all i did is went back on what i remembered and then I started, just basically, I didn't have to do anything. It's just like the Holy Spirit guided me to buttons to Christ and a lot of other things. The whole, that this Antichrist spirit guided me to the right books, into the right um, channels of people to uh, teach me how to get into meditation and, and to go to higher levels. And that's what basically happened. But I do remember um, this self-pride spirit behind it was actually making me feel good as each level i went through um as i was getting higher i sort of felt like i was becoming a god like my own god and um it was like a false love you know it really it was like light it was like well, as they say satan is the um, angel of light so it so felt it like love and light filling, was... it was filling your need at that time you yes. felt like it was filling your need and your need is being felt there so you were digging deeper. But I, I, I understood what you said is that there is gener generational lineage. From your lineage, from Germany, there's a, a heritage there that the door was already open, so it was an easy access. You know, we want to make sure we get all the points so people around the globe can understand. So what you spoke about, the, the Barra book, what type of book is that? There was, is a, oh, oh, there's so many um, books out there. One of them was called I Am, I, uh, I Am, I Am, and it was from a yogi guy. And he was basically going really deep with all this connection with the spirituality of um, um, the divine creator. So never say Father God or never say Jesus. There's always divine creator, the creator of all. And it's sort of a way that this new age business can actually be close to Christ but have a false Christ in the entity. So 
it, on that angle, that was one of the first books I sort of read, and um, it sort of touched my heart and ticked all the boxes. Because I was broken inside, my soul was sort of shattered in so many different ways. Trying to put it all back together, um, it was love that I was craving. I was craving it from Jesus. I just, well, the, the more I got deeper in the occult, the more um, I was pushed further away from Jesus and um, the true Heavenly Father. So as I read these books, and then I started to um, be led into meditation, and that's what sort of gave me the supernatural powers. Well, then I could sit there on a chair, and within about probably 10 seconds, I was in a higher state, like I, I was out of the body. And um, that's where I sort of learned could how to astro, explain, astro Could you explain? Explain. You will sit and meditate. And who were you meditating yep. on? They told you who to meditate on and what will happen. You're out of your body. Could you break it down? You will go to yeah. different places or you will go levitate up in the air. What, oh, what is it? This place, it's, it's, it almost gives you a supernatural feel of pure love which and, and light as your eyes are closed. It's like light, all these flash light, lights in your, um, in your consciousness. And basically all it did is it connected you to like um, almost like an artificial heaven, you know. So when you're in these places, I'm actually looking for this divine creator, you know, to be one with him and one with all. Um, so we're all one spirit, if you know what I mean. So that's, that's what happens. And as, as you get closer into that stuff there, that's as I found out later, the more gifts that you were given, that in this process you can actually ask for them and um, you know to do with I could actually read people's minds I could actually read a whole library of books to people I end up becoming a life coach because of these um, these tricks that um, Satan's um, I call them cronies that gave me through this new age and um, I could just like, like they would tell you things so you could foresee ahead all these little um, supernatural um, um, powers that, um, and levels that you go up within all this stuff. Which was, it, The further I, I was going in it, the more I was, I was leading myself down to the path to hell. But, um, okay, were, were you a, doing any form of ritual during that time to go higher? Yeah, there was um, sage, the old sage, you know, burn the sage, and, and um, candles, um, um, particular types of music. Um, there was, um, I didn't really get into too much of actually um, um, like chanting or anything like that, even though I might have had it on a music, but I never got it, um, I never did it myself. But all of this was leading me to a Kondalini awakening. Every step okay, of the way, the that's where we're getting. Yep. Okay, could you and break I, down, because people want to know. You put out the candles, there's different names on it, and you burn the candles. So the whole atmosphere would have a aroma, a sense going up. Yes. Is that Okay, okay. So that's correct. Okay, so yes. you'll burn the candle. And what is sage? I want people to understand. This sage um, that I, I, I was taught about, it basically uh, protects you from, you know, like unwanted, unwanted spirits. So when you're in this place of um, um, meditation, when you're sort of out of your out of your um, body and in, into this greater consciousness, you sort of it's it's like if you dive into a deep ocean and you know there's sharks in there, but it puts like a hedge of protection around you, and um, that's sort of like what it does. Well, that's what I was led to believe it did, and um, okay. so that. That's what I sort of did that there, and then um, called on the divine uh, creator to protect us when I was going into this place, as I was also asking in a in a way of prayer in that manner to whatever was happening in my life at that time. Um, okay. You know, for help in that manner. So, you mentioned so the Kundalini spirit. The Kundalini yep. is a yep. snake spirit. So at that time when you're yep. doing these things, did you feel these spirits enter in your body? Yeah, um, not straight away. I, I had joy, joy and love, I suppose, and um, and really enjoying the process. 
until I got to such high levels then the voices in the head which lead you um, were basically saying now call upon call upon these entities so that's the way I sort of went and then probably about a year and a half into that journey this one particular night I caught, I had a bit of a sore neck, so then I got into this meditation, did my thing, and um, and I called upon um, uh, the um, divine creator to send help to, you know, to sort my neck out. And within no time at all, I felt an entity, and it did not feel evil. And this is the trickery part. It came up around my left leg, went up up my uh, torso up around the back of my back in through the back of my skull and then my neck started cracking and it and all went away <clears throat> and then that oh, night I woke up I went I went to bed I, I finished my uh, what I was doing I didn't think anything more of it I just said thank you I uh, thank thank this divine creator for that got into bed went to bed that night and then I woke up early hours of the morning to roll over, and here I am on the ceiling. I didn't realise I was actually up there because you know there's a bit of a dark room until I looked down and seen my body on the bed. And, okay, um, so that let's, me let's out. break it down. Hold on, brother Rice. Let's break it down. So yep. when you 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 see what they wanted to do is to pray to this divine entity. I said divine God, but you see Satan call himself God too. So you prayed and asked this divine God to take away the pain from your neck. Something entered through your legs and come right up. The pain was gone. You went to your bed. And when you woke up, you find yourself in the ceiling, levitating, looking down on a body. You had an outer body experience. And what did you do? Well, to be honest with you, I looked down and then because I was, you know, like waking up as well. I'll tell you something. I didn't feel any different in any way whatsoever than what I was in my body. When I was up there, I felt like I was laying on a mattress, uh, head down, and I thought the roof was the mattress until I rolled over. Then I seen the body, and then I, whoa, I freaked out, and within a microsecond, I was back in the body. And um, and then after that, I sort of got out of bed and I sort of just sat there for a minute, just pondered over it. And then I rolled, got back into bed and went to sleep and woke up in the morning. But there was something in the room from uh, when I woke up. I could feel like a cold presence in the room. So that's when that entity that crawled up my leg started showing its true colours. It came in light and love, but realistically it was well, pretty much one of Satan's cronies himself. So a serpent of something, but um, either way a, um, a demon of some sort. So. And um, I I noticed Mm -hmm. it. Yep. I was just saying, I noticed there was an entity there. It's just like when you walk into a room, if there's some sort of entity there as Christians, you can, uh, I think as anyone, you could actually feel that there's something not right about a room. And uh, it's it's almost like they're there, but they're invisible. And um, because of the chill that came against my body and the goosebumps up around my body, I went, oh. I said, I knew right there and then that I was in trouble. So I went to work. I started getting attacked during the day. And um, when I got back into the room that evening, um, I opened the door. It was like walking into a freezer. The room mm-hmm. itself was literally like a freezer on the inside. And um, wow. that's when freezing the journey cold. began. Wow. Mm-hmm. Freezing cold. And um, and that's, that's when the, um, the tormenting began. Not so much the attack on my body, but the torment started, um, you know, like to say, I'm here and I'm watching you. And then, the, like, if I see myself in the mirror, the mirror, the eyes wouldn't line up, little weird things like that. And then you'd start to get, um, like, the spirit of fear would come upon you at the same time. You know, when you're not okay. actually in fear. Hold on there, Brother there. Rice. Brother Rice, the mm-hmm. mirror. I spoke about that, that mirror is an open door. The devil uses yep. mirror to enter homes. And I'm not telling the listeners tonight to get rid of their mirrors, but when you look into the mirrors, you recognize that it's not you. The eyes are not lining up. So something was looking through your eyes. It was, I believe, um, 
you know, like what was going through me, it was telling me straight out, like my inner instincts were saying that um, entity that I summoned up was in the room, was looking at me now through the mirror back at me. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, I'll tell you, it wasn't a very, very nice image, you know, so. Because the more I looked at it, the more it showed its tr- true face, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and then what happened after? Then after that, it it started coming at my. I was on this site um, for another three days, and um, I didn't really know what to do at this time. But to be honest with you, I uh, shut down all the uh, meditations and all that other stuff, as as I think anybody would when you uh, when you know that you've um, crossed the boundary. And um, so I was going to work, and I was. I'm, I'm telling you, I was struggling to function. My head felt like a pressure cooker. It felt like something was around my head and, and crushing my head. Um, I was unable to think clearly, and it was coming against the body, like the organs of the body, and um, causing cold, I mean, cold to the bone um, feelings through my arms and legs were the sides that it crawled up. Yeah. Um, feelings I never experienced before. Haunting. They're a lot haunting feelings. And um, now I see where they get some of these um, ideas from in these horror movies. These um, people that channel these things. And um, but yeah. that's pretty much what that's pretty much what I was experienced. Like living in a haunted house in my room, and against the mm. body. But nice. I, at that time, it still wasn't literally like um physical attack on it was more like um its presence around me was causing this but it wasn't putting yeah. its hand or like what yeah at this particular time mm-hmm. so i flew i flew home and i went and seen my sister and this is where i dug myself even deeper into trouble unaware of um people i, I didn't know about christ i did not know any of the ins and outs of the holy bible never even picked it up before in my life at this time Nice. And um, I actually went to see my eldest sister, who was um, married to American Indian, so she practiced um, Shermanism. Shermanism, um, she, okay. Yeah. And could you uh, explain that, what Shermanism is? So your sister practiced yeah. it. You went to see her, thought she could help you, and what happened? <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, I told her about it over the phone, and she was. Um, See, that background, they get their um, power from their elders, so from the dead, you know, like the ancient elders of the um, Indian um, beliefs. Um, but you, your voice um, went down uh, a little bit, Brother Rice. Your voice went down a little bit. If you could come a little bit closer to the phone. We want to make sure we don't miss anything, because this is powerful. Okay, go ahead now. When when I um, was asking her how she can help, and um, she actually draws, if, like I was drawing my power from this divine creator, which was really just a, uh, a member of a principality of Satan, uh, like a ranking. She was grabbing her power from the same way, but she was calling it the elders. The elders being okay. the ancient Indians. Yeah. Okay, so, so we want to make sure. So she was drawing her power from a divine... And power and so it was the same terminology yep. you pray to and you realize that this is a high ranking demonic power because she was doing the same so now and yep. you know what happened so i flew home and um she um we i went around to a place and she's got this um like a bed thing that you lay down on and she can grab charcoal um, burnt sage, charcoal, and um, she can sketch your body out and she'll show you where these entities are and where they entered it into your body and who they are. She can actually, by just looking at So she's psychic, like a paper, psychic then. So she's a high level psychic. Yep. She can draw your body, show yep. you where the demon enters everything. Mercy. Continue. Yeah. But the strangest thing was when I met her at the gate. I, her face changed. I actually seen the entity of, of of the spirits which have actually got hold of my sister. I actually mm-hmm. pivoted. I had to look at her face twice. I actually thought my eyes were playing tricks because you got to remember this was all new to me. This mirror business was going on, 
And when I seen that in my sister, it actually scared me. I went, whoa. I haven't, I still to this day, I haven't said anything to her about that. I have been trying to talk to her about Jesus, but that's another day to talk about yeah. that. But anyway, so I go in, I go into there. She's doing this. She's drawing it, and she's saying, you've conjured up something ancient, something very ancient, something very powerful, and um, that's what's got hold of you. And she asked me what I did, and I explained like I've told you. She goes, now, well, what I'm going to have to do, well, she did the sage thing around the room and chanted these uh, Native American Indian. Um, I, I can't understand what she was saying. I have no idea. And then from there, she laid her hands on until she could. Uh, um, the chanting is to have any, uh, that's what it was. It was to do with actually bringing, it's basically bringing the dead, which we all know what the dead really means into that room to conjure through her to give her the power to actually break this other entity off me so that's what that's what was going on so that's what the chanting was all about and um and she did a few other little rituals and then from there blew smoke all over me and then from that point on she laid her hands and started drawing this thing out and it was coming out of me and into her and was making her really crook and then um, she said, you're going to have to do this multiple times until we get this thing out. And um, so I went and seen her about three times. And I tell you what, I did start feeling a lot better. Uh, but um, now I'm a lot more educated. I just realized I replaced a part of what was there and put other entities in there instead. You got it. You so, take out those ones and put more powerful ones. So that's yeah. when that snake spirit enter you, the Kundalini spirit. Did you feel that enter your body? From her, I felt at that time I um she calmed me down. That thing was coming at me like pretty hard, like around me. Like it, it if if it was a fog and you could see fog, you'd see me in the middle of this fog and it was all around me, like a heaviness. And um, inside that heaviness, it's a suicidal feeling mixed with depression and mixed with fear, all three at once, coming at you. Um, and it Mercy. comes to, uh, to me, it was at your mind, so it could get to your heart. And that's where I was at at that time, because it, once it got hold of my heart, then it could break me down so that I couldn't function, you know, like I'd get scared. And once I get scared, it, then I've got no will left, you know. And that's what I was mm -hmm. aiming for. But for um, some reason, I just kept kept chugging along. And... Um, and then from that point on, it would have been, because I didn't go back to that mind side, I went to another one to work. So in my mind was, all oh, that happened now, I should be right where I go. <laughs> Wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I ended up going to another mind side and I started uh, uh, up my meditation again because it all went away after about three visits with my sister. So I thought, oh, well, everything's all good. And I was staying in contact with her um, if anything went bump in the night type of thing so that she could um, uh, do her rituals from Perth and take care of me wherever I was. Okay, and, so um, you, you went, so hold on, you went back after your sister, you felt better, and you started to do yep. more meditation again and meditate, yes. and then you felt that you could connect with your sister and she could work from where she was and help you. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. like a vicious cycle spiraling down. If if you could, you could probably see it. Whoever's listening um, out there. So I was trying to look for for um for the same salvation again, and then I thought I was okay now because I thought I had the protection. So, mm -hmm. but it was still spiraling me down. It was all false. It was all lies. A whole lot of it. So, anyway, um, I met this other site. And my powers went up a whole other level. Um, this 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 um, psychic abilities. So I came to this site, and I could sense who was running, uh, what spirits were behind what people, and who was running what at this particular site. So I started saying Heavenly Father. For some reason I started saying Heavenly Father, and um, and I I started actually blessing all these people which were causing this problem. And I end up changing the whole dynamics of this particular mind site. So the way, it just the way came upon you then. 
So a change just started to come upon you to turn to the real God. Yeah, and I, I just started saying, Heavenly Father, I mean, I'm, to be honest with you, I, Heavenly Father to me was still a myth because I'd, I'd never read the Bible. Yes, I knew there was a God out there, but I just thought it was this divine creator, Heavenly Father. It, well, the, the, the image of those words came into my head. I, oh, that sounds right, so I'll start saying that. And um, oh. wasn't too long wasn't too long after that um i started writing um every morning i'll do a bit of meditation um this was over a two-month period i was at this uh, work site and um i started writing every morning what was coming channeling through me and it started coming from new age methods into um a mild version of gospel which I didn't know what I was writing at the time until later when I came to Christ. And um, so then in the end, everything I was saying, Heavenly Father for everything, and I was sort of, it just became normal. And um, I didn't realize it, but I was actually coming to Christ quite quickly at this time. So mm-hmm. I, I ended up coming to this site where I'm at now, and it was yeah. on Easter Day. 2017, that night that I got attacked on my bed. And mm-hmm. that's 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 when the enemy came at me full pelt. And these are some of the things I went through. Um, that first night, that night, I should say, I lay down on the bed and um, I was still sceptical of things going bump in the night because of my past experience over the last um, 12 months prior. And um, I just felt something was in the room, but I went, no, it hasn't, nothing has attacked me as yet, and I can call my sister if I need help. So I laid down, and this, it was almost like somebody came across the bed, kneeled over the top of me, and started strangling me. And um, a massive weight on my heart, like on my chest, like I couldn't breathe. And um, that went on for about 10, 10 minutes or so, and then it stopped, because I couldn't get up. I, could, I literally couldn't move. So then I got up, got off the bed after it stopped. I went, man, that freaked me out. That did a physical attack like that. I got up inside of my bed, and the first thing that went through my head was, I was, there's a guy he's passed on now by the name of Derek Prince, not not the Asian Derek Prince, but uh, he's an Englishman of um, of background. And I was mm-hmm. watching one of his deliverances uh, movies, and it went for about an hour, so I skipped it to the back where they did the deliverance prayers. I thought this would be the one, because I had no idea what I was doing at that time. I was basically putting a stick into the hornet's nest and revving them all up. And um, so I said this deliverance prayer, and whatever this thing was in the room at the time, it came at me again um, like a thick fog around me and knocked me out, and I fell on the floor. I was on the floor, sort of semi-unconscious. I came to, who knows when, probably a few minutes later, and I had no energy in my body at all. It was weak as, weak as. I managed to crawl back over the, on top of my bed again. So I was on the floor next to it. And as I laid on the bed, this entity came through the um, backside area. It was like, um, uh, like a vibration. It's like my whole body was shaking there. And that's how it entered me, this whatever this thing was. And that's the one which was, um, from that moment forward, I had movements in my body. All types of weird things were going on. And um, plus, I was being attacked like a wolf. That was not even the one that entered me. But I had others in the room which constantly tormented me. What I mean by tormenting me, as soon as I lay my head down on the bed, I'd feel these entities crawling all over my hair, all over my back. Uh, so if you can imagine trying to lay down someone's got their hands just gently um, like a feather over your hair, around your ears, around your nose, and and over your back crawling like spiders type of feeling. So you can't sleep like that. You just can't sleep. I don't know about you, but I can't. I couldn't sleep. And then I had that fear, just that fear all around me. And then attacking the mind. It was like these voices in the mind was just constantly hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. There was no rest. So one, I was getting no sleep. 
Mm. Then from there, I was getting attacked in the mind to take over my mind. So I was starting to lose what reality was. And, the, you know, the, the worst part about this brother, Patrick, mm-hmm. yeah. and listeners was, I couldn't, I did not know how to go to talk to somebody for what was happening in that time. This was all within a week after, uh, after Easter um, 2017. I didn't know who to go to. I, I, I thought if I went to my friends there, uh, my work colleagues, so I think I was yeah. absolutely um, lock up material, straight jacket job. I um, so I had, I had nobody to turn to, and at this time I wasn't in Christ. Uh, I hadn't even been into a church. I didn't even. Have, oh yeah, I did have a Bible at that time. I've got to tell you about that in a minute. But um, but the other things which were happening were there was like um, insects crawling up the wall or over the bed. But when you go to turn the light on, there was nothing there. So you, had these, so you had these entities touching you and then attacking your mind. And then it was it was like um, I'd had a, um, oh, what do you call it, like a hex put on you, so to speak. Mm-hmm. It was sort of like I was being attacked that in, in that manner. So I ended up sleeping in the buses because I couldn't sleep in my room. I didn't want to go back to my room because of the fear. Just as soon as you opened the door, there was this fear and you knew that you weren't going to get any sleep. So I ended up sleeping in the... Um, Buses and getting up before anyone got up to go to work. And then I go and have a shower and get ready. But um, there was a lot of things like that going on. Um, I got attacked on the job um, by the enemy. Twice I could have got um, blown up uh, and electrocuted, but I was saved by grace. By um, uh, I believe the Holy Spirit. But that was after I gave myself to Jesus. But that was still within a year of that process. Mm-hmm. But um, that's what I was going through, and as the enemy wow. was using people, uh, people here on the job and at home, um, to come against me in, in all types of weird ways, um, uh, to do with um, something which you for not seen coming, the next minute it would come your way either to, to um, lose your job or. Um, uh, so if, if they could get me to lose my job, then I'd lose my um, income. Then it'd be another yeah. tragedy upon me. So it was yeah. all those type of angles were happening. But um, but now I'll get to the to to the um, highlight part um, mm-hmm. of that. So, so you've got a person who's going through all these woes, and the enemy's there to take him out, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And then I um. Happened to go. There's an old bookshop uh, up here. It's sort of like an old library, but nobody uses it. And I was, this voice was in my head saying, "You need to go in here." So I go in there and have a look because I'm used to listening to these voices from this new age business. And uh, yeah. even though I was, I was skeptical, I went in there and it was and it was leading me towards the Holy Bible. So I'm looking down the bottom, and here's five five Bibles, and I'm I'm, I'm I'm still like, I, I can't go, I couldn't go there at that time, but because I was half broken man and this voice was calling me, I just grabbed one of those Bibles. So then I grabbed it and I took it back to my room and um, within the period man. of, um, uh, would have been about two months, I couldn't handle these attacks anymore. So from 2017 Easter to around about November, I grabbed that Bible like there's no tomorrow, Brother Patrick. I grabbed nice that Bible nice like it was my, my my only avenue. I didn't ring me mum. I didn't ring my sister. <laughs> I didn't ring nice a friend. I I rang Jesus. And uh, Amen. these attacks were was, was so bad that I got out of bed one night because I couldn't sleep anyway. And I put on my knees and I cried out to the only um, saviour that's kept me ticking even to this moment now. And I cried out to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I need your help. I said, I don't know if you if you really exist or not, but I said, as sure as any of the enemy's there and they're attacking me, I know you're there. I need your help. I remember, oh, I was a mess. I was broken to tears. I was an absolute mess. I was broken. I was absolutely broken. Yes. And, and then I... um. Uh, well, I didn't even know how to read a Bible then because the Bible's not like a normal book to read. So I didn't know where to start. 
So you can imagine someone grabbing a Bible that's got no no background at all in gospel or the ministry or anything. Because um, it was never never in my upbringing to even have a Bible in the house. So mm. I remember opening it and Psalms 91 came up. That was Amen. one of the first ones that came up. <laughs> Amen. The and, Holy Spirit was speaking and, to you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't move or do anything. I didn't even bother laying down the bed until I read that about 20 times. And I stood Amen. on Psalms 91. And even to this day, I stand on Psalms 91 and um, Psalms 23. And wow. um, obviously, that's a miracle. Of, wow. Just those two, those two there got me through. And then, then the Lord started showing me truth. Um, he, did, he didn't show me an exit how to actually um, get out of this mess, but he started using the enemy for his good. So you're talking about someone who knew nothing about the Lord or the background. And I couldn't read the Bible even then. Every time I'd go to read it, um, I'd, I couldn't get through probably five paragraphs and I'd be asleep. This spirit would come upon me, blur my eyes, and put me to sleep. I mean, like, I'd start yawning and everything. And um, even now, I've still got to get up and walk around and change positions. If I sit or go anywhere near my bed um, or any type of position like that, the enemy has to start to get an upper hand. So I've got to really be diligent about what I do when I read God's Word um, so that I can sustain it enough to get it in into myself. But um, so... That's basically was my journey. So by Christmas time, um, 2017, mm-hmm. I was standing on God's word. Um, I'd gone into a church called Victory Life Church um, in yeah. Perth. Yeah. And I, I can tell you, brothers and sisters, you've never seen a man run so fast up to the front of that church when they said, is anybody here that doesn't know the Lord? And I... <laughs> Mercy, I, had mercy. Smoke under, I had smoke under my shoes. You, because you can't remember. <laughs> so, whoa, I, I, whoa. Was, I was still being attacked. Even while I was going into the church, the enemy didn't yeah. hit me while I was in the church, but he made me known that he was there. And wow. um, I'll tell you what, there was, it was another spirit stronger than any Antichrist spirit, and it grabbed my legs and said, you're going down the front. And um, I've never had... I've never had fear, and before I wasn't much of a public speaker, yeah. and I wasn't much for in front of crowds. And until this day, I've never had an issue since. Uh, and when it comes to do with God's work, and I went down there, and I remember when she said it, uh, the sinner's prayer, and I said that, and that was that to me was a, a, the biggest hallelujah moment. Um, uh, that's when I really knew. Um, that Jesus was there the whole time through this journey. For when I crawled out to his name and he was Man. there before then watching me, but because of what Man. I'd done and things that I'd done and I hadn't, I was willingly not accepting him in my life. I could, I could just mm. imagine him there with his arms out in tears saying, come on, son, come home. And I just Man. I just wouldn't do it until until I was put on my knees. So, Man. And, um, and then... This is another um, avenue after that. So here I am, I'm off Christ. I'm going to church now. Um, this is on a Sunday. Um, yeah. I didn't know any better. The truth wasn't upon me at this time. Man. And uh, so I was going there and I was starting to learn or start to um, get involved with um, the uh, local brothers and sisters there. And um, starting to hear a few stories of what's going on out there. But, but meanwhile, I'm still being attacked all this time. I'm crying out for help. And I'm, I didn't know how to pray. Or that, I had no idea how to pray. Or, uh, how do I say it? Is it, is it Jesus mm-hmm. or I pray? Or is it to the Holy Ghost? Or is it, I didn't even know to understand the trilogy properly. So, mm-hmm. so my prayers were going out, but they were like hit and misses. And um, so anyway, uh, I found this deliverance. Um, couple that were doing it from their home in Perth Mm -hmm. and I went and had a chat with them and they 
sounded pretty good and proved I had a good notion inside me. I didn't pick up anything bad there. And I went through that process with them. And um, the, what they were doing and how they were doing it, I believe it's done more damage to me than good uh, at that time. Um, I see. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is, is the faith I was leaning on Jesus, I actually started to lose it because I wasn't actually getting delivered. Mm -hmm. um, the enemy was still there. And um, yeah. so from there, I um, went back on the, I stopped going there. I went there for three sessions, three or four sessions mm -hmm. and um, blessed him and moved on. And then I stuck to the word and I, I lent on the Holy Spirit through my journey from that moment on. Mm -hmm. I asked the Holy Spirit on, on every decision I made. Mm -hmm. um, because... Wow. Brother, brothers and sisters, I was still being attacked at this same time. Um, what I mean is the uh, fuzzies and stuff that I didn't have a clear, I was asking for a clear mind. I was asking for Christ's mind and for him to um, cleanse my heart of any iniquities and all these things. But I was still getting smashed to a point where you're functioning at about 70%. And, um, <clears throat> and at this time when I was, when I was leaning on the word, guided me in the Bible and um, and I was, the Lord was actually showing me because I couldn't get the Bible through the word reading it quick enough so he knew I was um, into a little bit of YouTube so then he started guiding me in that manner so I, I, within a period of six months I was showing everything from where men create, were created in Babel and all the way through I was uploaded super fast in that manner, and uh, in that journey, that um, I'll show them the truth um, about Saturday, Easter, Christmas, how it's all been manipulated. Um, um, I'm not going to get into that. I think you's, a lot of people out there would have done enough research on that on their own, right? We'll get into um, it when you come to Toronto. So, <laughs> country. <continue>. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Mercy, yeah. mercy. So, so here I am, I'm up at work and I'm getting downloaded. So the next time I go to this um, church, I'm, I'm, I'm on a mission here. I'm going, I want to speak to the um, to the chief that's running this show. Why are we worshipping on a Sunday? We should be on a Saturday. Why Why are we worshipping on a Sunday? And and um, why is there no mention about a day of rest for the Sabbath or a Saturday? Isn't this the Ten Commandments? And I'm asking these questions, and they, they said something to me, one of the things that I couldn't don't think about at the time, that every day we worship Jesus. I said, yes, hallelujah to that. But I said, what about the ten, uh, fourth commandment? Well, wow. it's been Sunday for years, and this is what we do. I went, no, nah, it's not good. Well, enough. you're sharing something Spirit. new. You're sharing something new yeah. with me, so we're going to have some question after. Because this is powerful because, you know, okay, continue. Because I didn't know you even knew about the Sabbath. Continue, my brother. Mercy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Buttons of Christ was like meeting you. It wasn't too far down the line from this. So anyway, I'm sitting here talking to this guy, and the Holy Spirit's telling me straight out that this guy is under um, um, deception and... Um, and um, uh, of what's going on, you know what I mean? He stopped questioning. He's become a part of um, a part of just the culture of that church. And um, yeah. I couldn't, I, I couldn't even be in and bless all of them people there too. I, I'll say that openly. I, and mm. um, I couldn't stay in that church. I grabbed my wife and my family. I said, "We're going." I said, oh, "We'll teach from home if we have to. We'll read the Bible mm -hmm. and." And you know, my wife was already spinning out on myself because Brother Patrick, I'm only just got to know Jesus and here's yeah. this man, it's on a mission. You know, like Amen. you're talking about Paul, oh, this is me. Amen, <laughs> Amen. praise I've, the Lord. I've gone, I've, gone, I've gone from someone that, that you know, you are all nuts, you uh, um, Jesus uh, believers, you know, what's wrong with you? You're all brainwashed to... Um, can't you stand on your own two feet? And um, to someone who knows, I just knew, I just knew that Jesus was real. 
and the Holy Spirit was saying, this place is not honoring, not honoring my word by the Ten Commandments. And um, you got to understand, guys, I'm still learning the Bible. I'm still putting things together. And the Lord's saying, you need to watch this video because I need you to get this now. You need this information now. So now I've done that. Now I'm not, I don't have a church to, to, to fellowship with. And I'm up at work. And um, I'm going through these videos and Brother Patrick keeps popping up. And I'm sitting there going, oh, what's this video about? <laughs> it, <laughs> it took me about a day, a day before I'd click on it because I had resistance. There was nothing about what the video stated or what how it, how it was represented. It was resistance so it just there from the up. enemy. Hold on. So it just pops up on your screen when you're searching. When I was searching, it popped up, and it popped up again, and it popped up again, and it happened about four times when I checked my phone on that day when I was sitting for lunch or morning tea or something like that. I, I, I love my sermons. I've got to get at least two or three in a day. And um, and at that time, um, well, buttons of Christ keeps popping up. So I just, oh, all right, I'll click on it. So I clicked on it, and then the Holy Spirit said, bang, you got to meet this man. And I just went, Mercy. that was it. I'd have... I'd, I think I was telling Brother Andrew, I said, I haven't stopped. Like, you've got that many videos, but I'm still, I'm working my way through it. <laughs> yeah. Boy. But um, it's very powerful. It's, it's very lucky to, um, to, um, to have God touch you, Brother Patrick, and your family, and, and, and all the ministry there. There's something about that church, uh, about your ministry. And I'm only saying yeah, this, this is the end bringing time. It up now. It's the end time, my brother. Listen. Yeah. This ministry yeah. is the end time ministry, and that's why people don't understand it. I wanted to tell the, the people who are listening. So when you met and you contacted me, tell everyone what happened. <laughs> yeah. We have time. Oh, I know I yeah. supposed to preach, but we're going to cut that out. We're going to just focus <laughs> on this because God want to do something for somebody who is listening, who have their doubt about button to Christ. You are in Australia speaking. God led you to button to Christ. Tell us what happened after. Well, after um, the Holy Spirit, I, know, I can't explain it for everybody, but the Holy Spirit just landed on my heart, and it, it's a knowing. There's no question. There's no any voices that come from my head from the enemy or anything. It just says, they're lies. This is truth. And... It said, you need to meet this man. And then it led me to your web page in, in, in no time at all. And bang, I sent an email. And um, and then from there, actually, this is the part that surprised me because I got contact from you guys. And then Sister Michelle goes, you wouldn't believe it, but Brother Patrick has happened to be right next to me. And that's, that doesn't normally happen in this way. So I went, oh. And then you jumped on the um, on the phone, and we started talking. And then you questioned me in a couple of things, and the Holy Spirit said to me, "This, you're going to have to go somewhere away, like somewhere where you can be by yourself, and you're going to have to lock your phone in your top pocket." And at this time, I just went, "Oh no, this is going to be interesting." So we were talking. Uh, you were asking me questions, just getting to to know a bit about my background and and how the enemy was coming against me. And you guys seen the truth, what was going on. So then I said, can you just give me 15 minutes? I know you were really busy at the time. It was, I was, only God can make this happen, the way it happened, to give the time, the window, the opportunity, everything. So then I went across to this room, which I knew would be safe, locked the doors, locked myself in. And this room's about the size of a sea container, a normal sea container. So I said to Brother Patrick, I said, and to Sister Michelle, Brother Andrew was there, and I can't, I'm not sure who else. There might have been someone else, but I, don't, I know I heard, I was introduced to those uh, three. Bless you all. And um, so then you said, okay, I've heard what what needs to be, um, what what's going on here. And so like, we're going to pray. So you did that, and within about two minutes, I was bent over like a horseshoe backwards. So I'm still standing. I did not fall. 
supernaturally did not fall. My head bent back and I was, my head was on the floor. Now, I'm 44 and I tell you, I don't have that flexibility. Mercy. And I'm, not, and I'm sitting here, I'm talking to, well, I'm not really talking, but I'm, I'm sort of, I am in between saying a few things too. And the next minute, I was flattened, pushed sideways and I'm on the floor and my arms are twisted up around me back. I, can't, I have no control over my body. It was, it was, whatever this thing was, it was trying to pin me to the floor. But then I couldn't talk. I, I, I could open my mouth, and you're talking to me, and uh, well, you're praying. You're all in warfare, but I couldn't. There was nothing coming out. It was just air coming out of my mouth, and then uh, you, you did your piece. This, I think, this went on for about forty minutes or something like that. And eventually, you. Um, were able me to talk and then um, from there on broke broke the entity off me and I was able to get my arms free and uh, level myself out a bit then it was on my legs you broke that off then I was able to stand up but this thing felt like an elephant on me it was so heavy um, but you just I couldn't move and um, then it went from uh, a, uh, like a protective um, prayer and then I just felt light I felt free I oh, mean, I hadn't felt that way for oh, about a year, almost a year and a half, Brother Patrick. So to me, that was my first eye-opener of the power of um, the Holy Spirit, God, God's um, Spirit, and Jesus Christ. Amen. And it, it outflanked and destroyed anything that was coming against me through the power of prayer. Amen. And the power that I, the first time I'd experienced, the power of Jesus Christ, and I just, I was dumbfounded. You know, like I, I was saying, praise Jesus and all these type of things. I was still in shock. I was still going, plus uh, it, it takes a bit of energy out of you too, but um, yeah. I just went, whoa. And um, so that was our first encounter, 40 minutes of um, full-on warfare. Um, but what happened after that, so... Three days after that event, the Lord had put on my um, heart uh, six months prior, you need to get the keys to the church, uh, the chapel up here at Murren, and open the doors. And I, I, I had that resistance, that spirit of resistance was there. So you guys um, deliver me from what was going on. I went straight in, got a key sorted, had no fear. I had no idea how to even go about running a church or, or a ministry of any. I, okay, you know, so let, let me break it down, Brother Rice. Hold on. So you're saying there was an empty building there that is a church that is locked up. You went and get the key. The Lord impressed you, and you open up the church. Yeah, and oh, then yeah. what happened? Yeah. Well, that's, that entity attacked me on the bed is the spirit, the um, principality over Maramaran. It's the one that's actually doing all all the controlling of everybody here. Uh, as I found out, um, and yeah. that's the one that you broke off me that day, uh, plus others um, yeah. uh, at that time. But when I came into that church and I walked in, I opened the doors and that I just had an eerie feeling about me. And then you can imagine this church uh, chapel building. It's dusty. Everything's still packed up up against the walls. Ten years hadn't been open. Nobody, nobody had put the name of Jesus in glory in that building for a decade. And um, <clears throat> anyway, so I walk in and um, I found a Bible there. So I flicked it open and, and I did some 23 because that was my little favorite at the time. And mm -hmm. next minute, the roof starts creaking. I can hear the roof creaking and the walls started creaking, like, like literally like twisting, creaking. And next mm -hmm. minute, I got this chill it went right up me, cold chill. And um, so I basically put it to the Lord in prayer and um, basically called upon the Heavenly Father to bring down his spirit in Jesus' name to cleanse this building and to and to um, declare the blood of Jesus over the building. And then I just started reading sums after sums after sums after that. I just picked them, just started reading them. About six six of them later, about 15 minutes later, uh, the um, the room had a different energy about it. Amen. And uh, that was that was what that's the journey that really started off um, myself and my walk um, with the um, chapel up here. So plus a lot of prayers from you guys and um, 
obviously uh, still still cool years me um the elders, the leaders, so bless you for that. And um and leading up to this day now I'm still still getting a few attacks on, on, on the daily um um events here and there. Yes. And um mm -hmm. I have called I have called upon yourself, Brother Patrick and um sister Michelle and um brother Andrew and the ministry a few times. But it's always when I'm going to a newer level. Like mm -hmm. if if I went from one person in the chapel to two to three, then I'd get hit again. Mm -hmm. Um if I um save save somebody by um I didn't save anybody, but if I if I actually led someone to Christ and they gave themselves to Christ, which uh, two of them did up here, then I'd get mm -hmm. hit again. And mm -hmm. um things like that. So I do realise now that um each one of us uh, who are off Christ listening to this right now, we're all targets. We're like on a big radar that the enemy can see us. And the higher we go, right. obviously, the more the beacon. <laughs> so yeah, I sort yeah. of feel like I'm like that. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I, I'm growing every day, um, brother Amen. Patrick. And um, the other day... Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Of, um, the other day, I mean, the last time we spoke... Um, it was last week, yeah. Yeah. Now, I called up um, everybody because this is why what what you could say that gets put into our mind, um, we may think it is of God that we need to double-check it with the Word or ask our elders um, and put it into prayer. Um, it's so important because this spirit that was um, lingering around me, it was almost like a thorn in my th side, like uh, what happened to Paul. And I read it in here, and I put it into prayer, and the voice came through was to keep me humble um, in my walk, in my early walk. And I went, oh, okay, maybe that is God talking to me. And I read a bit, and I, and I, asked, I left it at that. But then as the months went by, this thing was driving me nuts. And... Um, It'll, and then I put it down to I'm actually tolerating this thing, and um, I, I was putting it into prayer. I was trying different angles, and that's when I rang you up and um, uh, basically for a chat more than anything. And um, we we led into prayer, didn't we, Brother Patrick? So yes, yes. And then we broke off what was there on that day. So that was that was really really good. The power of prayer, long distance. In person, okay. doesn't matter. So let, let me break it down. So Brother Royce called me back and said something was still there in his back or going through his back, up his legs. Yep. So what I did last yep. week, we prayed again and we rebuked those spirits. And the Lord revealed that it's a spirit of unbelief, a spirit of pride, yep. and of self. So I was able to bind those spirits. And you could hear Brother Royce coughing and they coming out. So those were the final deliverance just last week. But Brother Rice, you yep. went for when you went back home, you went to the Seventh day Adventist Church and you started you found the Sabbath. But I did not know the Lord told you about the Sabbath. That's exciting. Because I did not tell you. Did you know that I was Seventh day Adventist? I did not tell you. No, no, you didn't. And I didn't know you were either. Um through those um, journeys. And oh, just one more thing too, just before we get to that seven day Adventist um, journey, you know, when you, when I, we first made contact, um, Brother Andrew, and I was laying there on that floor and I couldn't talk, the things that you were saying, how could you know what was going on? Well, you could not see me. You couldn't hear me. That's that's proof there alone that the Holy Spirit was in control of the whole whole um, whole event. What was happening? Yeah, so because the Lord I... led me to pray. The Lord will lead me to pray. Yep. What is going on? So I will command the Spirit, and I will know what's going on, even though I'm not there, because it's Holy Spirit led. That's that's that to me, like what you just said there, and what I was uh, afterwards, the weeks after, I just went, that is amazing. It's like you got a camera in this room or something, you know. Like, how 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 could you know that? And um, but as as for the um 
getting back to the seven day adventures um side of things. Um dealing with you guys and watching your lot of your um a lot of your videos I started seeing a bit of the truth what you're talking about and the best thing that I love about Seven Day Adventists uh, they follow the King James and they follow it like it is the only food worth eating <laughs> and Man. I was reading the King James and I, in, the, in me that was truth at a, such an early day in my walk there was no other truth but that word from that book and the how it was being explained it was so powerful, and um, then that's what that's what truly led me. And and a, and a few a few testimonies I've heard from all of you brethren out there, and a few of the people that you put me on to, um, brother Patrick. Yes. And um, so um, and I just put two and two together that in these end days, and I'm not putting it out to any other um, faith out there, but I just believe. The power in the Seven Day Adventists is one of the most powerful Christian churches in the in the in the world. And um, Amen. Well, these Amen, brother. Going, oh, oh, and these attacks I was going through. You know, every time I tried to watch one of your videos, I'd have nothing but problems with the phone or whatever I was trying to watch it. But the Lord somehow enabled me to get it through. Like it, you know, like it would break up the phone would turn off by itself or or the signal would break out. And um, like the other day after, uh, I'll, I'll get back to, seven, I'll stay on this one thing, seven day eight, but when I got back to Perth after uh, that deliverance and a bit some pieces after that, a couple of weeks after that, I ended up Googling seven day Adventists in Perth and that's the same church I go to now and I still go to now. And when I walk mm. through the door, the the environment in there, and the truth that gets told, it just felt like home. So, Amen. Like, that was the first one that came up, and that's the one I went to. And the people there asked the same question, what led you to um, to, be, to become a seven-day Adventist? I said, the Holy Spirit, truth. That's the reason why I'm here to this day. Amen. Is the glory of Jesus Christ, salvation, and truth. So, Amen. That, that's, that's the journey with the... Um, on the um on the seven day event as part of things um uh on that manner but um you see the devil glory, the devil glory. is so afraid of the sabbath that when we do deliverance and if we do it on the sabbath the devil we get the breakthrough more powerful he's so afraid of the sabbath that people don't oh. understand brother rice it's so powerful but you know what when you go to the sabbath truth you have to keep your eyes on jesus not the people in there but the devil have his agent everywhere. So you have to keep your eyes because the devil will try to get people in there to come up against you so you leave. So remember at all yes. times, Jesus is our example. And that's why this ministry yes. strive. And God have some plan. This is a last day ministry. That's why a lot of people don't like this ministry. But we have helped hundreds of people. Praise God that I can do one or two deliverance over the phone around the world. We have some deliverance that was done similar to yours. That is so powerful. So I'm praising God because a lot of people don't get it. If people get it, the power within this ministry, they would have helped and they would have rallied. Because this ministry is going to be one of the ministry that usher in the coming of the Lord. This is a last day ministry. And we need the prayers of the brethren because some people don't understand. And I'm happy that you're on, you're speaking, your own experience. God led you to the Sabbath. Nobody told you. The Holy Spirit led you to the Bible. You know how many people like you out there who need help and it's the Holy Spirit that rescued you and sent you to the Sabbath and it pops up my ministry on your screen four times so that you could connect with us. That's divine power. And I know that is going to encourage a lot of people because when we go to help people, Brother Rice, I never tell them I'm Adventist. I help so many people and then they ask me, what religion are you? Because we come to deliver and after the deliverance, you can learn about the Sabbath. 
It's not about religion. It's about the need of people reaching souls for Christ and helping, delivering people that needs to be delivered. And I praise God. Mercy. Go ahead. You know, um, Father Patrick, praise the glory. How, how's this? I'm just going to add this before we... I've got something really good to tell you too, what happened at at that church, Seven Day Adventist Church. This is what's on, this is what's in my top pocket. Glory, honor, praise me to your name, Jesus. And then right next to that, I've got Psalms 3, Matthew 27, Revelation 19, Revelation 12 and 20, just, just up the sleeve for a rainy day, you know. But mm. um, that's, that there, it just reminds me, the praise part, the glory, uh, just just how, who we are honouring here. No, the Sabbath is, is the laws, but, and I know I feel at peace when I'm, I'm, I'm in that place, but it's Jesus who I'm actually there for on that day. Man. At that Man. church, talking to you right now. Um, our voice is going out all around the world, and that glory is to one name, and that's Jesus Christ. Man. And, and, to the, Man. and the fact that my, I'm breathing, my heart beating, is to that glory. So Man. I want to tell you something. Sister Michelle would know about this because I did speak to her about this event, Brother Andrew, but this happened to me the second time I went into that to that church, um, Seven Day Adventist. And um, I was there for the day, and then I went to a, to a men's meeting there. Fantastic. Loved every bit of it. I can't get enough of God's word. Oh, fantastic. And um, as I was leaving, I felt I felt like an entity in the car, getting in the car with me. And I'm going, oh, man, here we go again. And I drove home. It was only 10 minutes. As I walked through the door, I felt it get out of the car, follow behind me into the house. And um, I went into the kitchen, and I've gone, oh, I'm going to have to go into warfare prayer here. And before I even turned around, there, there's a, a play area just near the kitchen living room there for, for my daughter, Margaret. But nobody was in there. My wife was sitting at the table feeding my, my daughter. Next minute, all the toys started going off by themselves. They started alarming. And yeah. I, she looked at me, and she goes, there's somebody there. And I said, yeah, I know. There's somebody followed me home. And um, so we went into war for our prayer, for what I've, I've learnt from you guys and also out of the, um, of the Bible, and um, hit it for a good, good 10, 15, 20 minutes and um, cleansed the house. So talking about um, protecting yourselves um, in, in church, um, I was reminded, thank you, Sister Michelle, if you're listening out there, thank you, and Brother Andrew, and um, also for yourself, um, Brother Patrick, for you've made mention of this as well. But um, that was my first experience about um, being at church and being attacked at your church um, and bringing it back home into the family. So these things can happen from all different levels and... Um, where someone could be next to you saying, Lord, Lord, but their Lord could be a different Lord to your Lord. So, and, uh, being old, being old, uh, new to this church, I still don't know all the members there. I'm still getting to know, and I'm not saying anything about any of them, but that's what happened to me in my second time I was there. So, that's another that's another story of just, just how the enemy works, uh, which has happened to me recently. So, uh, but guess what out of all that? The tail end of that was the glory goes to Jesus again because it was his power yeah. through the, for, the, for the Holy Spirit that, that um, gave us peace in the home. So, in that manner. But um, even, even talking to you um, before uh, we come on the line, the enemy has still made the walls creak a little bit around this room. But when then in the prayer, before I came online, no problems at all. Um, just, that's that's the best thing that Jesus gives is peace, and that's what I've got out of this journey. Um, I'm sure we're all going to be going through ups and downs, but um, leaning on Christ, um, if something goes bump in the night, I don't worry because I know He's got my back. So, Amen. But yeah, that's that's well. That's a I'm so glory. blessed. Praise the glory. I'm so blessed because. <laughs> I was wondering, I heard when you praise Jesus, you always lift Jesus up, but now it's clear because I never know your journey so deep, you know. 
you told us, but we did not have time to listen the whole journey. This is just unbelievable. And I know it's taped. People can get it. Sister Michelle can send a copy to you. This is very powerful. And I know, brother, God is going to open a button to Christ ministry in Australia. We're going to be over there. And we're going to have offices all over the world where people are going to be delivered. And God is preparing you. So, as I said, get your journal, write out, ask God, what do you want me to do? And the Lord is going to empower you more. And he's speaking to you already. Oh, this journey is so powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm just praising God. (laughs) I'm just praising God. (laughs) You know, we have to go have a night where we have the question and answer where we could have people oh, ask yeah. a few questions. Because if we go through that now, we're going to be on the line until <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Is there any last word you want to say? Is there anything else? You... What would you say to people who don't believe but the Christ is real? What do you have to say to them? All I'd actually have to say is um, there is, if, if someone can't pick up on the um, the power and strength through Christ and the Holy Spirit coming through the members of Buttons to Christ um, for the Father's will, then I'd be actually, if I was one of these members, I'd be actually saying straight out that um, there's a connection between the person to Christ that um, needs to go to a higher level. Because you, I'm only saying this, you really got to look at it, guys. 2017, um, on Easter 2017, was my journey in Christ. So a very short journey. And um, to be able to line up, just watch not even five minutes of the video to see the power coming through buttons to Christ, through Brother Patrick and your ministry, through through the Holy Spirit speaking through, if you can't, if someone out there in the world is listening or um, just can't feel that, I'd lean back on the word. I'd really lean back on the word and um, fall back into prayer. And mm. I'll, I'll be, I'll be uh, aiming for a, a, a refreshing connection with Christ because the power that comes through buttons of Christ um, is there for a reason. And like you said, Brother Patrick, and um, when you're saying it's an end time, I still haven't found a connection of of this magnitude and um, in in Perth. Even the church I'm going to now hasn't got to me. I can't I can't find it there. I'm filling it out, asking the questions, getting to know people there, but it it it's a, it's different. The um, dynamics are different and. Um, I can see why I've been led across the ocean to touch base with you good people um, because you're all super prayer warriors and that's the secret. I've, that's what I picked up on is the fact that you are so strong in your prayer, your connection with Christ and the Holy Spirit connection matches and that's what drew me to this Holy Spirit and me to just go bang, I need to meet uh, Brother Patrick and whoever else is over that way. So if if that anointing on yourself isn't quite that strong, um, keep listening to the brother Patrick. Follow the word. Um, lean on your fellow brethren. Um, call out for for God in prayer to to have your faith lifted up um, by the Holy Spirit and in all ways possible until you get to that place and you'll see it. It'll be shown to you what's going on. Um, it, it, this, this is not just a community. This not not just your everyday community. Um, uh, Brother Patrick, but I'm talking this to everybody out there listening, wherever you are. Amen. It doesn't matter where we are. I'm in the middle of a Amen. desert, you know, and the, you know, oh, and I can, <laughs> and I'm picking up on it, you know. So, yeah, Amen. So, that's 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 what I was saying. That manner is um, follow follow wow. the um, good lead here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, we follow, really follow appreciate Jesus it, and, my brother. We really appreciate it, and I thank the Lord. I, I'm just, you just really, you know, I was just really empowered tonight by your testimony and just how the Lord led you out of the occult 
and how the devil wants to kill you. And God was there, even when you didn't know him. He anointed you. Yeah. Mercy. This is so powerful. Yeah. I just want to praise God. That's yeah. how he loves each of us on the line tonight. He loves people. He ordained you. He called you by name. And he said, you are mine. And the devil sees it and he's upset. The devil tries everything to kill God's people, but no power. I just want to pray yes. God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to do a prayer. And then I will ask anybody. I'll take two questions. I know it's unfair, but I'll take two questions. <laughs> and the Lord will know who to ask this question. Let's just pray right now before Father in heaven. We're so grateful and thankful for this night, the Sabbath night. Thank you for your power of the Holy Spirit. Cover Brother Rice and his family. And I know you have a purpose. Lord, send down fire in that home now. Fire in his room. Angel, put watchmen on the wall, on the job. Father, let your name be exalted in his life. Thank you, Lord, for the protection and the power that you have placed upon Brother Rice. Thank you for everyone that is listening that they too will receive the power from on high. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God, Brother Royce. Thank you very much. You can remain on the line. I'm going to take two questions. Praise the Lord, Brother Royce. We appreciate yeah. you Amen. at all times. Amen. Amen. Yeah. No, Amen. God. no problem. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to yep. take two questions. We plan, and if I can't answer, brother, right, so back. Two people, two questions. Yep. The Lord will allow. You are going to say something? No, no, no. You're okay. right. Okay. Okay. Yep. okay. So two people unmute your phone and ask two questions. We only take in two. Another time we'll go into it. Is there anybody or there's nobody? Press star, star, and unmute your phone. Two questions. Okay. So we have nobody. Hi, brother. Hello, Brother Patrick. Brother Patrick, hello. Okay. Uh, I this heard of. This is Sister Karina. I have a question. Okay. And you are calling from the UK. What time is it in UK? Oh, the time now is 4.07, 4 7 minutes past four, right. four in you're, the morning. Praise the Lord. You're a soldier for the Lord. You're set up. You're on the prayer line for so long. Deprive yourself. God is going to bless you. Okay, my sister, um, what is your question? Um, Hallelujah. You know what? When um, Brother Roy said that he actually went to church and took home another spirit and another and, a, and an entity followed him home, how is it that oh. um I know okay, let, you know there are there are people in the church with different spirits, yeah, I know that, but I didn't know that um how is it that a spirit could um entity could actually you know follow you home from the church and uh, okay, I mean, okay, the, I share a few testimonies before of me going to several churches and praying for people. And demon came out at the altar and entered somebody else. It happened in two or three Adventist church. Okay, so what happened? Because the enemy goes everywhere. And a lot of people who go to church, some people are just church goers. They don't really know God. It's just a formality. So people are in their cult. They, do, they are in the lodge and they still go to church. So when, if, if Brother Rice go to church, because his situation is so powerful, his level is a higher level. So when he goes there, the enemy have his agent. They could come over and he will shake his hand. And because he's learning, they can just follow him home to chastise him and to attack him. But as he comes higher, he's going to recognize it and the spirit of the Lord is going to point out. So it's, 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 it's a, a lot of people. There's a lady one time I spoke to her over the phone. And while I'm speaking to her, an Adventist, seasoned Adventist, the demon just started to speak to her over the phone to me. When I went to her house and she was at, back to herself, she says, I'm an Adventist. I can't be possessed. 
it don't make sense. And she wouldn't allow me to pray for it. But when I spoke to her before, a different voice, she's a woman and a man voice spoke to her. So the thing is that a lot of people are wrestling to say, if I'm an Adventist, a lot of people are Adventists, but we are not real Christian. We are just, I would say, hypocrites. We just go to church. There's a wake-up time coming. A lot of people in the church is involved in the occult and doing things that is not of God, and the Spirit goes with them to church. Because, you see, when I'm preaching, there's times when I'm preaching when people will jump up because Spirit leaves in them. Because when we go, we go deep in the Word. It's not everybody go deep in the Word. If we preach in and the Spirit continues to speak to preach, we'll preach for an hour and a half. If you go to the, the normal church, people are going to say, oh, it's too late. They're going to get up and want to leave. But as you allow the Spirit to leave, so it's a long thing, sister, to break down, but the devil is rampant. And Brother Rice was under heavy attack, so they were looking for a loophole. So they want to terrorize him. Even now they're watching him everywhere because God has a tall purpose for him. And that's how some of us have big purpose, and we have to stay in the Word. Mercy, I hope I answer your question. Praise the Lord. Okay, next one, last question. I heard somebody I... else was, yeah, go ahead. This is Sister Michelle. I just have a quick uh, question here. Um, I know, Brother Royce, you mentioned your wife was there when the toy started going off. How has your wife, how have you guys come together in regards to this spiritual warfare? Because I know that there are a lot of married couples on the line. Either one person is going through it, the other person doesn't understand it. How how did you guys come together? Or did your wife always have an understanding of spiritual warfare? Go ahead, Sister Brother Michelle. Uh, yeah, um, Sister Michelle, that is a fantastic. That's a really good question. And um, my wife has um, grew up as a uh, as a Catholic, and um, the spiritual war side of things, she had no idea about uh, at all. Um, it was only when I was ringing her up and telling her what was happening to me while I was on site up here. And then when she seen me when I FaceTimed, just how scared I was, I was pale white, terrified. Um, but she actually, I started scaring her. And, um, and then it was through the Lord teaching me that I was able to teach her. But now saying that, this hasn't been an easy journey because we've both been literally on different um, levels. We've never been equal in that path. Um, so because of what's been happening to me, uh, I've, I've been staying in the Word and learning more to, to protect myself and to grow in Christ. So I've been um, relaying this back to my wife, but it has come with resistance. Um, I've seen the enemy come through my wife many a times to put resistance right against me. And I've had to stop and actually um, calm the situation down and whatever it is that happened to have happened, explain it to her um, through the word of God what's happening and um, of what, how she's reacting to me and how that relates to scripture and then where I was coming from in scripture. And then after we've calmed down, we could sit down and actually have a talk about it. And then that's happened time and time again. And then she's actually come around and gone, I can see where you're coming from. Uh, but this resistance is there. The enemy works even in the family, even though we pray together, um, and we do all, all these things. It has united my family um, in Christ. We've grown together. Um, my son's come out of um, darkness and he's giving himself to the Lord um, this year. Praise the glory, Jesus. Thank you. And um, my daughter, um, the harmony within the house has done a complete 180 since. I've got upset just myself has come to Christ and grown. Um, my wife, Carmel, gave herself to, to Christ again and um, walked away from the Catholic side of things because um, she sees the truth now. She she sees 
sees the truth from her own self through the Holy Spirit to um, um, uh, on the Sabbath day. Uh, and when I first went that way, there was resistance there and a resistance to the um, Seven Day of Inner's Church. But now she sees it all um, in, her, in her own journey, in her own pace coming up behind uh, myself. And I can tell you, people, there's, I'm just a normal man out there. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing more than anybody. I'm sure there's people out there who could run rings around me in knowledge from the um, um, the Bible and probably uh, know the book without even looking at it. But what's kept me on this journey in my family and stepping forward is the enemy's real. It's a daily event attack. And that reminds me, and that's where I get my hunger from, is the fact is, that Christ is my Lord and my Saviour of my family. He's the head of head of our house, as he is with all of you guys out there. And that there is my food uh, for hunger to actually um, 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 to move forward every day. But things come up all the time. I've had times in the family too, where I've actually um, had to go for a walk and and have a talk with Christ, and then I pray. And I come home, and it's all—it's uh, almost like the um, sting's gone out of the um, out of the um, conversation. And all of it could be to do with um, Brother Patrick. You brought up on one of your sermons not very long ago about um, toys, um, which um, can have uh, be portals through Walt Disney and a few other different brand names, and that there cause a misunderstanding between myself and my wife because she just didn't understand the brand names could be a, a cult um, um, backing to them like Walt Disney himself for anyone out there can jump on a computer he was a level 33 in Freemason and um, you know like but my wife didn't know that where well, I knew that and um, so for me to explain to her to get rid of good toys that the, our child enjoyed um, cause into re, um, resistance so once I explained it and and um, we put it to prayer the sting came out of the argument and she was able to see it's like the Holy Spirit put truth upon my wife instead of me trying to have to explain it to a great detail and that's the love and joy of Jesus Christ in our home so I think there'll always be a bit of a rough journey here and there um, in this journey because we both learn at different paces and my wife's not being attacked. I'm the only one that's been attacked in the home. Um, you know, so she she, does, she knows what I'm going through. She's seen it. She's seen things go bump in the night in the house. Um, strange noises, um, weird things happening. So she knows they're real, but she still, because she hasn't experienced it on herself, um, she can't, She's still not quite there with me on that level of that, but she's coming up very fast. So praise the glory, Jesus Christ, again for that. Um, Sister Michelle, I hope that's answered your question now. Um, I bounced a little bit on it, but I hope that's been a help to anybody out there. Anyway, prayer, prayer is number one in our family, um, as to hundreds of you out there, the same. Um, but um, it's definitely the fact that the, um, the Lord is using me as boot camp by the enemy, turning it back on the enemy to train me to become a warrior in that sense, which has fast-tracked me um, to where I am today. So that's why I'm so much in glory to Jesus Christ, because without him, I'm, I'm, I'm just a man. And, um, and I know the fact without his mercy, um, the paths that I'd, I'd gone down, no one else forced me to go down, the paths that I chose to go down would have led me to an early grave. There's no doubt about it. Um, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, uh, there's no protection without salvation in Christ. Like a sitting duck. So, uh, hopefully that's going out there. Man. So. Powerful, powerful, powerful. I wish we had an all night. I would just keep going. I know a lot of people <laughs> buzzing saying, if I could ask a question. <laughs> mercy, yeah. mercy. I, brother, brother Patrick, for that, yeah. for that other um, question that came in before, um, in this testimony earlier on, when I went into Victory Life Church and I gave myself to Jesus Christ, 
I may mention that I was one of those people that had an unclean spirit on him. That's me. Mm -hmm. I was one of those people in the church that that spirit could have jumped off and gone on to someone else who had a portal there who were living in sin but still at church. Amen. So what happened What happened to me at that seven-day event is, is just a reversal of what you said, Brother Patrick, but I just wanted to bring that to point. So these things are definitely real. Everything. These things can happen. Yeah, yeah, and because you went into that church for refuge, you see, God have a sense of humor. You went in there, even though it's not the Sabbath, because he's leading you. He, he led you to the Sunday, and then he showed you the Sabbath. So that church, you have access to it, and you are able to go in, and the Spirit of the Lord rescue you, and he sealed those people. You know, God knows what he's doing. You know, <laughs> mercy is powerful. <laughs> oh, praise the glory. Uh, uh, I can't stop saying Amen. it enough. And, um, but Jesus, much love to you. That's what I say. And, um, Thank you for your love and your your um, glory and mercy upon us all. And um, thank Amen. you for your word because I've never never read nothing like the Bible. It is phenomenal. It's a living, oh, breathing um, uh, doctor. Oh, and um, and um, wow. I'll tell you, Brevin, I'll say it again, and this would probably be where I'll, I'll lead it to the end, but Jesus is real. This is not a make-believe thing. The reason why Back to Christ has even got this prayer line and uh, and the family is together, and the reason why you people are all out there, is because of Jesus. You know Amen. that blood that he that he's got over us, that cross, and what all our problems are nailed to that cross. And um, as we come higher, they definitely get nailed in belief, a hundred percent to that cross. So, Man. and um, and 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 his mercy back to us. So, um, that's that's oh, praise the glory. Oh, praise the glory. Yeah. Oh, for my Hallelujah. God. Oh, for, oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. For, oh, for. I have to I have to go and sleep and meditate on this. The Lord led you yes. to the word. You never read a Bible. He delivered you. He saw that the devil wants you because God have a purpose. I can't wait. To see the purpose that God <laughs> has for you, He led you to the Word. You read your feast on the Word. He showed you about the Sabbath. He hooked you up with us. You go and open a church and start to worship. Oh mercy! <laughs> we have a lot to share. So anyway, <laughs> we just want to say thanks to the Lord tonight. Thank you, thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. And, thank um, you. Well, God bless you. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. another time. We're going to have you on another time when we could do a question where the yeah, audience no could problem really at get all. involved. No problem at all. No problem yeah, at so all. Just stay God strong. bless you all. Yep. Yeah, God bless you too. We're going to turn it over to whoever is doing the, 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 the prayer request. They could probably just pray. I don't know if you want to go through the request or probably they could use this time to just hear people's feedback. You know, give whoever want to speak at two minutes or one minute to speak and then you just do a closing prayer sister michelle so it's over to you you want to say something better right i just want okay. to say um just a just a, a quick prayer um i just want to say heavenly father i come to you in jesus name and um i pray for your blood to be over all of all of us all around the world and to Buttons of Christ over them and in the family and community of Buttons of Christ. And may all of our prayers be lifted higher in our faith upon you to believe 100% on the gift of the words that we say for your words, Heavenly Father, in line with your word and your will, um, to come to be for each one of us, for each one of us are the cogs of the body of Christ. Each one of us is just as important as one another. And each one of us have got are born into this world, Heavenly Father, through your will, in in our salvation in Jesus Christ, to complete the plan that you have for us all, for your for your glory. And um, may your glory be upon us all in this hour. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>